Breckenridge was founded as a town uh, based on gold mining, the discovery of gold. And that is a very rich history, a very rich story. The story of Breckenridge is closely tied to the history of mining. First came the placer mines and the shaft mines, but the gold wasn't just in them there hills. This is Breckenridge, Colorado, but they're moving it away to get the gold that's underneath. It also lay in the valley floor. Getting to that gold required a new way of mining. As mining progressed, the dredge boats became the um, most important form of, of mining in this town. Dredge boats, large floating ore processors, sprung up all over the valley floor. If you have a mine, a mine is going after a load. It's going after the gold that is still in place in the mountain. But the dredges were going after gold that had been uh, eroded through time and had been brought down into the valley floor. Each bucket of dirt is worth 15 cents. That gold lay as much as 30 feet below the ground. The dredges had more effect on shaping the landscape of Breckenridge and Summit County than really than any other form of mining. There were nine dredges operating around Breckenridge, including the Riling. This dredge went up and then did a U-turn and came back and was working its way back down this way. Its remains still lie in French Gulch. I love this site. I love this dredge. Winter snows now blanket one of Larry Crispell's favorite sites in Breckenridge. When I started coming out here, you know, 30 years ago, that there was more structure here. The Riling dredge began operating in French Gulch in 1909. Over the next 13 years, it would extract an estimated $7 million in gold from the valley floor. It sank in 1922 and was left to battle the elements. In the summer, the dredge looks, even though it's grounded, it looks like it's floating in a spring-fed pond. The water's quite clear and you can stand on the edge of the dredge and you can look down and you can still see remnants of the dredge. Out comes the Melton While the Rylings mining career may have ended, preservationists hope its job as history teacher endures for future generations. You can still see the mining. You can still tell those stories of, of mining throughout town. And, and this is a part of that. The structure is too far gone for a full restoration, but that doesn't hinder the history lesson. We don't want to restore or rebuild it to its original form. It is a, a dredge in, in ruins. You let a relic like this um, sort of tell its own story even in its demise. And there is something sort of rich about that. It's the uh, setting that tells the story, the operation of the dredge and uh, how it affected the environment. The falling snow serves as a reminder of the uphill battle ahead. There is a physical reality to the fact that it's in you know, a remote site. It's in water. It's, it's subject to um, all the elements, um, four seasons. Victories in this case need to be measured in the short term. If we could at least think about a way to keep this here for a few more decades, hopefully in the next 30 years there'll be better techniques in historic preservation and we'll let some uh, very smart upcoming generation figure out how to restore it then for the next 30 years.